Hello, welcome to this week's legislative update. I'm Jim Baumgart and co-host is Nanette Bullabash. Thank How are you, you doing? Jim. From Elkhart Lake. I'm doing great. And we have a great program today. We're going to be talking to an outstanding uh, 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 director of, of the Maywood Environmental Indeed, Which is park, an outstanding place. And an outstanding uh, uh, park director. And uh, a lot of things going on at Maywood, 24 uh, uh, hours a day almost. I guess they do close down the Eventually. park at a certain time in the evening, don't they, Dave? Well, we do shut it down to the public, but that doesn't mean that there still aren't a lot of things going on out there with uh, wildlife and, and uh, this time of the year, of course, birds coming back. And, yeah. But and anyway, welcome. Thank Dave you very welcome. much. Thank welcome you. back. Thanks. Thank yeah, um, thanks. A lot of things going on at Maywood. I uh, know that you, know, you have these early feeding things, you have uh, pancake and uh, things you just got done with a while back and you have that every year. All kinds of things going on. Why don't you uh, remind people what they may have missed uh, so far this spring by uh, Flapjack Day and uh, other programs that are coming up and we'll try to encourage them to come out. Sure. Well, although we do have things going on in the winter, March is when we really concentrate on one particular thing and that's maple sugaring. And so during that whole month, we're capturing sap out of our maple trees, processing it, making maple syrup, and inviting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fourth graders to come on out and learn about that process. And we usually celebrate the whole thing by having Flapjack Day, which is that usually every year it's the third Sunday of March. So that's always a huge day when the public can enjoy learning about maple sugaring as well. Especially when you have a wonderful day that uh was and, and hopefully it'll be next year. It, yeah, oh my gosh, this, this March has been just one of the best marches on record, I think. Uh, we've had a nice, steady, gradual warm up, mm -hmm. not many days of sleet and rain and other nasty weather. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the day for, Matt, for Flapjack Day was outstanding. So. And, and people can uh, actually uh, buy some of the maple syrup, can't they, after they, a while? They can, they can. Yeah, we sell it in bottles. We use most of the syrup that we capture and process for our maple sugaring program with our kids. Okay. So they get to taste it. They, what, what, that same day, they're tasting. They can taste it that day on Flapjack Day, but all the whole month of March when we okay. have all these fourth graders out there eating pancakes okay. too, okay. with our homemade maple syrup on it as well. And then whatever's left over, we'll bottle and sell to the public. Well, how can, uh, well, I, I, I'm in, interrupting Nanette here because I, my bias is having a wonderful environmental park. What kind of programs can people expect uh, uh, in the, uh, uh, the rest of the spring, yeah, summer, April, and fall? April, May, and June, yeah, it's coming there's, up. There's, well, we'll finish off the academic part of the year through June with all these school programs, which there's a lot of. But public programs, there are many, many programs, a good diversity of programs for the public throughout the month of, of March, April, May, and June, when we do a lot with birding and hiking and just discovering what's out there in nature. We, we have that open and that's for everything from preschool kids all the way up to, to senior citizens. So uh, one program we started not too long ago was our OWLS program, <laughs> yes, it's great. which is an acronym, stands right. for Older, Wiser, Livelier Seniors. Oh, and we like do a lot of the same things with them that we do with young kids, taking them outside, introducing to them to new discoveries that they might not have ever seen before in nature and uh, opening their eyes and their hearts to what nature has to offer. I find that fascinating. What is it, what kind of comments do you get from those senior citizens? Oh my gosh. They, what do they like the most? I, I think the fact that they're, they're seeing things that have always been right there in front of them, but they never took the time to discover. Okay. So whether it's birds, whether it's tree identification, whether it's use of a compass mm -hmm. and mapping, um, just all kinds of outdoor skills and interests that these people are finally discovering for the first time. That's, I, I will get out there. <laughs> well, they, you have a, a lunch and learn program too where people on a certain day, if they look at your schedule, they can bring their lunch out. You'll give them coffee and water to drink or whatever and uh, they eat their lunch and they learn something about the uh, uh, out of doors or watch a movie or whatever you do on that lunch and learn. Yeah, that's, a, that's another wonderful program. And in fact, on the one that's coming up, we're having um, some folks from an organization called WOW, which stands for Wildlife of Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. oh. And they're bringing in some wild critters. So it will be a great family program. So if par parents want to come out with their kids for that one, 
Uh, that one's coming up over the spring break period, so I think oh. the kids will have off of school, so they can come out during that lunch hour on that day and uh, discover some of those critters. How, but, how wild? What are the critters? Oh, they, I'm not sure what they're bringing this time. Sometimes they've bought, brought birds. Uh, sometimes they've brought big turtles. You just never sometimes know. Sometimes snakes. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> well, <you've laughs> got, kids love them. You've got your own snakes there, don't you? We do. Yeah, we do That's have, right. uh, we do have a, a box turtle there. We have a snake there, too, that are great teaching tools for us. That's what's so wonderful. When I walk into the Maywood Center, just being there, it's you feel like, wow, the city's not that far away, but here we are in this sanctuary. Yeah, it, you really it, feel it, like you're crossing you something. You do, yeah. It feels it's like relaxing. you're in northern Wisconsin, although you, you right on the very edges of us are urbanization. But yet here we have all of this, these wonderful habitats in a very concise area. And even if you come on a bad day, say it is sleeting and snowing, you walk inside and you've managed to bring a whole lot of the outdoors inside too with we, your displays yes, and we, your natural... Um, you're, you're giving people, you know, you can see birds, you can see, you can learn so much just walking through. It's sunny, it's beautiful. We have a, a, not, uh, a ne a several indoor exhibits, and in fact, we also have an indoor beehive that's always fascinating oh. for people. So you can get right up close, stare into the glass, and watch these bees working as they're going out. And yeah, I was going to ask you, you, you lost someone one winter, uh, didn't you, and uh, you got them back again? Yes, yeah, that's, I think most uh, bee raising folks were having a difficult time that winter yeah. with uh, keeping their bees, and so a lot of us had to go back and buy new uh, oh. batches of bees, so. Yeah. But now they they're, seem to be thriving now. Well, so Nick, one of the interesting things, if you walk in, uh, there is a rude awakening that tells people uh, the reason we need environmental uh, places like Maywood and others is that we don't necessarily always take care of the environment. Mm -hmm. There are two passenger pigeons uh, that are, are mounted mm -hmm. uh, and the last of them died probably about oh, 2000, I mean, I mean 1900, uh, 1905 or a little right. before. Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. There's none left and there used to be millions and millions that used to darken the Wisconsin sky mm -hmm. and there's mm -hmm. not one left. Because we ruined their habitat. We ruined the habitat, changed the uh, things, and uh, they couldn't recover. And overconsumption, a lot of yeah. hunting and overconsumption yeah, of, of passenger pigeons. Barrels and barrels so. of passenger pigeons to the Chicago market. Uh, that's why we've never been friendly to the Illinois people, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, on a positive note, I can't help noticing this that. incredible display. And it's all these kids with smiles on their faces. They're doing things outdoors. And I understand that now Maywood recently started a partnership with Camp Waikota. Right. So tell um, us about your couple, youth program. A couple years ago, uh, I approached the president of the YMCA, Donna Wendland, and suggested that maybe we ought to work together, Maywood and Camp Waikota, in order, to, in order so that we could reach more kids. Because really, in essence, what we're trying to do is create the next generation of stewards of this planet. Mm -hmm. And if that's mm -hmm. truly our mission, we need to be working at a much faster pace because we're losing more and more kids all the time with their introduction to screen time. Mm -hmm. And so many kids are spending just inordinate amounts of time in front of computers and handheld devices and don't have opportunities to spend time outside mm -hmm. seeing the wonders of nature. So these are just a few pictures of some of the things that kids have gotten to experience uh, in their time out at Maywood. Uh, and it happens throughout the year. So you can see some winter scenes, spring and summer scenes, and um, it's just wonderful to see these kids out there oh, yeah. for the first time experiencing something that should have been something they've seen many, many times in the past, but all of a sudden here it is, a brand new thing. They've wow. never seen this before. So oh, that's it, so great. Yeah. So these are the memories they will take with them. As Correct. They grow up. Yep. Ab they're absolutely. Real, and outdoors, I, or... I grew up on a lake in northern Wisconsin, and I spent just tons of time just on a canoe or back in a bog, and it was those experiences that got me into a position like I have now, and that's what I'm hoping for these kids. Okay. So. Well, you have something that's coming up uh, during the uh, summer in cooperation with Camp Waikota. Well, we're going to do another program for next week, which we'll delve into it. Uh, but uh, you're going to be dealing with with uh, uh, summer programs that uh, uh, for, what is it, five to seven year olds, eight to nine, and then 10 to 14, yeah. uh, something for everyone during the, during the summer. 
Yeah, well, Camp Waikota, first off, they do an outstanding job of putting this brochure together. Mm. Uh, and in the brochure, they have programs beginning as soon as school gets out. Um, we don't start ours at Maywood until after the 4th of July, but um, you know, that don't, don't count out June because there's a lot of great programs that they have at Camp Waikota. During the summer months for us though, we start our, our programs after the 4th of July and we work with kids ages, uh, we, we have uh, what's called our Eco Buds and that's for five and six year olds. Oh, eco -buds. Every week we have these five and six year olds there, but every, every week we also have ages, a group for seven and nine and also for 10 to 14. They all have different subjects that they're that they're uh, focusing on, and they come back. They go home every night. Yes. Except some of the older ones have an option to stay overnight, uh, yeah, one I'll, night, and have a oh, camp out. Good. Right. How we good. usually have a we usually have one night of the week. Usually Thursday is our evening camp out for some of those kids, and again, for many of them, it's a that's a whole new experience sleeping Things in a tent around yeah. the campsite. Yeah. That's right. So if a parent is interested in enrolling their child in your, your program, say, they would just contact you directly? So if they wanted to get into our camp, they just contact Camp Waikota. They'll handle all of the registration there, okay. and Camp Waikota's staff will then be doing the, the programs with them, but at Maywood. I see. So. And I see. all those staff are, are highly trained oh and, and have to pass yes. certain tests. So people, people have children, they want to make sure they know that they're, they're uh, protected, and these are highly skilled uh, young men and women that uh, have made uh, uh, this a, uh, uh, a passion for, for teaching kids. Yeah, I used to work at a camp way back when I was a college student and all you needed at that point was first aid training. Well, it's well beyond it's, that yeah, now. They, they go through a long checklist of things that they have to be trained on before they're hired as camp counselors. Well, and, and then this fall you're going to have something that uh, we'll talk a little bit more uh, about next week, which is the uh, school program that uh, uh, that uh, Maywood and people should really uh, pay attention to that because it gives the uh, kids a chance to get outside and uh, uh, see nature as it really is. There is a, a new movement afoot at Maywood. We have discovered that in all the years of doing programs we usually worked primarily with third grade on up and we've discovered that since all of these students now are a, kind of addicted to being in front of a computer or even a television. At a young age. Even at a young even age. Like they give they iPads to babies. Yes, we've discovered that we definitely have to try to reach out to a much younger age. So this fall, we're starting a nature-based preschool for four-year-old four kids. Oh my, that's wonderful. But yes. we must end it. This thank time. you, Dave. Oh, it's my, pleasure. So Annette, my pleasure. My yeah, pleasure. Thank you so much. And everybody who's come to join us. So if you're interested about Maywood, uh, please stop out there and visit or look at the brochure at uh, Camp Waikota. If you have a child that may need some uh, experience and some excitement during the summer, that's the place to stop and go and visit. Till next week, this has been Legislative Update. So.